good to see everyone here this morning. Take a moment, find someone you haven't spoken with in a while, and give them your great biggest smile. Give them a warm greeting. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? It's a beautiful Sunday morning out today. So I've got announcements this morning, and I've got a lot of stuff to run through, so I'll run through it really quickly here. So first of all, our all-church picnic is coming up. It's right around the corner, guys, so we're excited to be able to fellowship together and eat together and just have a good time of fellowshipping and eating after a Sunday morning. And so when is that date again? Next Sunday is the All Church Picnic, next Sunday. So what we need for that is we need another grill for that. We have Chuck Carell, he's given us one of his grills, but we need another one. So if you don't, if you have access to a grill and you want to give it to the church for this next weekend, talk to Chuck and he will help you out with that, okay? Secondly, it's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. For you fathers, once after service, there's a table out in the foyer that you guys can stop by and there'll, some, there'll be some gifts and things that just appreciating all the fathers this weekend. Also, next week or next on the 23rd, um, we have Vaiva and Marie Cole are here next week. So they're coming in, um, they're missionaries and from the, oh man, from the West Africa district of the Church of the Nazarene. So we'll get to experience them and how, what they're doing and how the Lord's working um, in their district. Uh, also, men's, men's Retreat is also coming up next week, June 21st and the 22nd, um, so continue to reserve your spot for that. Um, that's a big thing, so there's a lot going on next week, um, so there's all the things throughout the church, so make sure to keep, a look, keep an eye out for those things. And then Vacation Bible School, that's another big thing that's coming up here in July. So talk to Pastor Brenda, get excited for that, and if you, need, if you want to help out with that, make sure you talk with her. All right, so that's all our announcements today. I have one more thing to say. So last week we did Promotion Sunday as well, and we had two people that weren't here, unfortunately, but they are here now. So we're first going to recognize Grace. She can come on up. So she is officially being promoted again to the college and career class, and she is off to Trine University in the fall. What are you studying? For computer engineering. So she's... Every time I've been around her, she's got that gentle, quiet spirit about her, and she's going to do phenomenal things for the Lord um, out in the world. So. We're laughing because some of us know Grace as exuberant and not so quiet. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, here you go. Here's officially here's your book for that. And congratulations, officially moving on for college and career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's announcements this morning. Thank you, Zach. Uh, we'd like to invite the ushers. Did you have more? Anything else to say? Okay, we'd like to invite the ushers forward at this time. Prepare our hearts. Continuing in worship through our tithe, God's tithes and our offerings. Would you stand again, please, as well? Father, you say in your word that you work out everything to its proper end. And that is our prayer this morning as we bring these gifts, as we bring your tithes and faithfulness and humility. 
humility and obedience, Lord, and our offerings. God, we pray that you would use them for your kingdom's purposes, Lord, and we trust and claim the promise that you will work out everything um, to its proper end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue in worship.
With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness from generation to generation. That's one thing I love about this church is we have multiple generations and we see each generation passing down the gospel, encouraging each other. It's a beautiful thing. Let's continue to sing about the goodness of our God.
those things and so many more to be placed upon Charlie, Lord. God, we ask that and we pray that we proclaim that today, Lord. As he goes out to the path that you have for him, the training that you have for him, Lord, help him to be able to strongly and boldly proclaim your name, Lord. And we know he's going to do that. We know he's going to do that so well, Lord. God, as he runs into the stressful situations of boot camp and the, the stressful situations of encountering so many different people from so many different places and the hard situations with drill instructors, living together in a dorm and all of those things, Lord, we ask and we just continue to help him be strong for you, Lord. Be strong for you in all that he's doing, God. And we thank you for his heart. We thank you for his mind as he continues to go out and does his will and do, does the will that you have for him to go out and serve his country, Lord. We thank you for his commitment to you. We thank you for his commitment to this country. We thank you for his commitment to this church, Lord. So God, we ask and we pray massive blessings over him today. In your name. We thank you, Lord, for so much for Charlie and what he's doing. God, and we thank you for all that you're doing, not just within Charlie, but within this church, Lord, within everyone in this church, God, within the hearts and the minds of us as we follow you constantly, as we have the opportunity to come to you and sing praises to you, fellowship with others that know you, Lord. God, we pray and we ask, God, Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you and all the busyness of the summer and all the craziness and all of the events, Lord. Help us to know and remember how much you love us and remember that today, God. God, we thank you so much for your commitment to us and that that commitment stays strong in its all situations and all things, Lord. God, we love you. We trust you. We give everything and everything to you today. In your name. by his loving example, how to love the Lord. 
I didn't realize that, maybe even so much when I was growing up. But when I became a man and when I was gone out on my own, I began to realize how blessed I was to have a mother and a father who gave me the love of the Lord in their lives. You know, uh, attitude is something that goes a lot with uh, fathers. Dads, do you ever have an attitude? <laughs> Let me ask everyone else. Uh, everyone besides dads, do, you, do, your, do your fathers ever have an attitude? Of course they do. I want to read something that Shepson Swindoll wrote in his book uh, entitled Strengthening Your Grip. And, and I think it's some great advice, not only for being a father, but for just being a human being. This is what he wrote. Attitude is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than what other people think or say or do. It's more important than appearance, giftedness, or even skill. It will make or break a company, a church, and even, yes, a home. The remarkable thing is, we have a choice every single day regarding the attitude that we're going to embrace for that day. We cannot change our past, impossible. We cannot change the fact that people are going to act in a certain way, that's impossible. We cannot change the inevitable, it's just going to happen. The only thing we can do is play the one string we do have. And that is our own attitude. You know, the, and thinking about things today, I was uh, realizing that the majority of problems, let, let me just ask a question. How many of you have had a problem this past week? Raise your hand if you had a problem. Did you get over it? I sure hope so. But anyway, the majority of our problems that we face are just one single decision away. And, and that decision may be what's standing between you and, and the idea of having peace of mind, between you and a, a better life, between you and even eternal life in heaven. And attitude has an awful lot to do with the many decisions that we must make every single day. Now, this past week, I got to thinking about uh, what my family life was like while I was growing up with my mom and my dad and my two sisters. And uh, I got done with that, and I had a great family life growing up. One of my sisters said she felt sorry for me because things were tough, and I said, I didn't think things were that tough. But anyway, after I shifted from thinking about my family life growing up, I started thinking about how things were when our own, Sharon and I's own children uh, were growing up. And uh, it's interesting because a lot of things came to mind. And one of the things I remembered uh, was the many, many times I had to remind my children about some task that I had given to do, like go pick up your room. <laughs> Today. Even this morning would be nice. But anyway, now, now something that I realized, and I learned that early on, that their idea of putting things away was often a lot different than my idea of putting things away. And so, I had to not only remind them of the task at hand, what are you supposed to be doing? Oh, picking up your room, okay. I also had to remind them that throwing things in the closet or under the bed was not the proper way to put things away. I want them to be put away properly. Any other parents ever had that? Oh man, look at the hands go up. Kids, look at those hands going up. Now some of you are really good at it and I want to commend you for that. But I want you to think about reminders for just a second. Because reminders are something that's really, really good. I love that it's in Peter's second letter, this is what he wrote. I will always remind you of these things. How often is he going to remind them? Always, absolutely. Even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. And so today I'm going to be doing that very same thing. I'm going to remind you of some things that you already know. I'm going to tickle your memory 
if, if I can do that. Now I'm going to share some basic decision making principles when it comes to family. Family is such a great, great blessing. There's some, there's some things that every single one of us could benefit from learning some things about family or being reminded about things in family. Uh, there, these things uh, that we can do that make a difference both in our lives, in the lives of our family, even in the lives of the world that we live in, whether it's at work or at play or at school, wherever it's at. And so I want to share with you a story I recently read that, that talks about some of that. It, it seems that there was a father, and of course it was a father and not the mother, and he was wanting to read a magazine that he had just gotten in the mail. And uh, of course, while he was trying to read it, his daughter, notice I said daughter, was bothering him. Hmm, imagine that. This is what she kept asking. Daddy, what does the United States look like? And she didn't ask it once. She asked it over and over and over and over again. And so finally, he got a little bit exasperated. He was really wanting to just read his magazine in some peace. And so he tore a sheet out of the magazine because on that was printed a map of the United States of America. Imagine that. And so what he did, he started tearing that thing into small pieces. And then he gave it to his daughter. And he said rather smugly, I might add, here you go. Go into the other room and see if you can put this thing together and that will show you what the United States looks like. Well, it was just about three or four minutes and here came the daughter running back in and handed him the map and it was correctly fitted together. Dad was shocked. He, what shocked him was how fast she had put it together. And so he asked, how did you get that thing back together so quickly? And she said, oh, it was really pretty easy. You see, uh, there was a picture of Jesus on the other side of the paper. And my God, all of Jesus where he belonged, then our country just came back together. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. Huh. Because she said a whole lot more, maybe, than she had realized. You see, without Jesus, this country is nothing more than pieces that can't be put together. But with Jesus, the country will always be in great shape. And I think the same can be said not just for our country, but if we want this church to stay together, we have to do it with Jesus. If we want our families to be molded, to be bonded, to be a shapely thing, then we need Jesus to be in our families, don't we? And so with that in mind, I'm going to ask you something. When it comes to your children, What's the most important thing that you can give them? Think it's food? Well, that's important, but it's not most important. How about water? Yeah, we need water, but is that most important? No, it's not. Well, I'm going to answer that question for you today with something that I hope you think about. You see, there are some parents that are so anxious to give their children what they didn't have when they grew up that they neglect giving them this one single thing that every child needs the most. You want to know what that is? Well, whether you want to know or not, I'm going to tell you. Because we find that answer of what is needed most in Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is the word of the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and, and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And so what's this thing that we need to know? To love God. To love His Word. To love everything about it. You know, that's a great passage, isn't it? I, I love reading that, and that is something that is so needed if we're ever going to get our country in the shape that it needs to be in. But there's another verse that I found is a great companion to that, to those verses. 
I think at one time or another, every parent here has either recorded it or heard it, and that is from Proverbs 22, 6. There's others that uh, we say, when on earth is that verse ever going to come to end of year? So what does it say? Train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he'll not turn from it. Well, I like another translation that puts it this way. Develop a desire in a child to live the way that they should. And when they're old, they'll live the disciplined life that we so long for them to have. And so it's training a child. How important is that? Well, you know, when we think about that, we say, that's pretty important. But there's another question I have. What about parent training? How important is that? I say that's pretty important too. You see, parenthood is, is indeed wonderful, but it's how many of you would agree that it's a difficult job? It really is. For the most part, we learn about parenthood from watching our own parents, don't we? Or from watching the neighbor's parents. But we also learn it when we become a parent with on-the-job training. What do we do to get to become better parents? Oh, we'll buy books and we'll read them and we'll say, I'm going to do that, but then we don't. We attend seminars and, and we learn things that we wish that we would have learned earlier. We wish that our children would uh, uh, develop that, that godly desire and eventually become the godly adults that we can be so very proud of. You know, there are some words of Jesus and they're great words that weren't spoken specifically or exclusively uh, for the family. But they can certainly be applied to any and every family situation. This is what he said as re recorded in John 14. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. So I ask you today, uh, parents, do you want to have great kids? Is that something you desire? Of course it is. Do you want a wonderful family life? Of course you do. And kids, do you want great parents? Of course you do. Those are re rhetorical questions. We always want that. Well, according to Jesus, the key to a great family is a great four-letter word, love. And it's love strong enough that we're willing to obey Jesus in every direction that he takes us. And that's a principle that can be applied to every single area of life. It applies to your family life. If you want a good family, love one another. To your spiritual life, if you want a strong spiritual life, love God and love people. If you want to have a good marriage, of course you do. Then love that woman or that man. Your job, your church, your work, work ethic, on and on and on we can go. The principle is actually very, very simple. Love, that godly, agape type of love must come first. I think that Paul, the great apostle Paul was right on with this assessment, and uh, it's interesting, the preamble to the great love chapter of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, where he simply said this, and now I will show you the most excellent way. And then he proceeds to write that great love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, he teaches us what love is and what love is not about what love always does and what it never does. And in, then in verse 8, he comes to the conclusion that we all want love, a God-made type of love, never fails. How often does that kind of love fail? Never. That kind of love really especially works in parenting and family life. But no matter how much we love our children, no matter how much, Sometimes they won't always behave the way that we want them to. Is that true? 
Parents, I want to ask you, when you were kids, did you always behave the way your parents wanted you to? I don't think I did. I was lying to wife. But anyway. Listen, sometimes that's because we haven't loved them the way that they need to be loved. You know, I've uh, met a lot of parents, and I've never yet met a parent that uh, came up to me with a big old grin on their face and they said something. You know, I'm so glad that my children are brats. <laughs> they just never seem to behave themselves. And that makes me so happy. No, I, I don't get that. All parents want their children to be well behaved, don't they? Somehow, however, are more successful than others at, at achieving that goal. Do you ever wonder why? Well, one of the things that I learned, uh, not right away, but after a while as a parent, is that some parents treat their children like they're miniature adults. But you know something? They're not. They're children. They need that love. They need that training. They, they need our patience, our kindness, our love. They need tender, loving, godly guidance. Now, it's a tough job. Being a parent is one of the toughest jobs in the world. And different parents have used all kinds of different strategies. Some are good, some aren't so good. Matter of fact, I'd say some of them are probably just plain old lousy. And I have to admit, and my daughter can probably say amen to this, I've tried them all. And so let me share some of the methods that uh, I tried to use to get my children to act the way that I thought they should. And I admit some had better degrees of success than others. Hmm. You know what? It's Jesus, the Son of the living God, who teaches us and shows us what it takes to enhance obedience. Let me tell you some of the things that I tried with. Sometimes parents just beg, would you please stop that? You ever said it that way? Okay. Uh, some parents approach it like a drill sergeant. You will do that right now, and I mean right now. Others use it like a guilt trip on their, on their kids to get them to mind. If you don't do that, you know what's going to happen. Others apply the fine art of persuasion. You're such a good child. Most of the time. And still others will use this thing called role models. I wish you could be like your brother. No, I take that back. I wish your brother could be more like you. Anyway. Yes, parents do try all kinds of methods. They want them to act the way they should. And there's different degrees of success, like I said. Jesus' words apply to our relationship with him, the same as our relationship with our children and children with your parents. In your spiritual life, if you have an obedience problem, if you're not following Jesus the way you absolutely know that you should, the problem resides in your own heart. And so I just want to ask you a question today. Just how much are you in love with Jesus? Hmm. According to Jesus, the more you love him, the more you obey him. Here are three suggestions that I want to give very quickly that uh, uh, show some ways that can help your family grow uh, and more in love and help your children become more obedient. First of all, just do things together. That's such a good way to do it. When you participate through uh, activities that you both enjoy, it helps both you and your children. It brings smiles, it brings happiness, it brings laughter. We see that this is a person I, I, I love and, and I really want to hang out with them because they're just so special. And so give them your time. Number two, give the kids a chance to practice. It takes a while to get some things down pat. I love, I love what the sign says, commit a random act of kindness. 
One of the things that I've often asked uh, young couples that are getting married in premarriage counseling is uh, communication is important. And how you communicate makes all the difference in the world. If you communicate kindly, you'll get a lot better results than if you just bark out orders. I had to learn that the hard way, I have to admit. And so find opportunities to, for them to learn how to act in a loving way toward other members of the family. And when they do it, brag on them and say, good job. I appreciate that so much. And number three, pray for one another. Kids, pray for your parents. They need God's help. Parents, pray for your children. They need God's help. Also, spend some time in the Word. Find out what God expects of us and how He will build us up according to our needs. He's already given us everything we need. The thing is, are we willing to take it? I want you to know that that is one of the most practical and special things you will ever do with your children. To give them God. I like the way that Paul put it in Philippians 1.9. He said, this is my prayer. That your love may abound more and more. And that's just so important. So true. You know, you see that, that word love there is actually a verb. It's not a noun. God taught us a very important principle to live by. Love must come first. And so do you want your children to be obedient? <coughs> Love comes first. Do you want your marriage to be stronger than it's ever been? Of course we do. Love must come first. Do you want to be a better Christian? Of course you do. Guess what? Love must come first. Do you want this church to grow by reaching people for the Lord Jesus Christ? Of course you do. But love must come first. But I ask you a question now. What have you blown? How many of you have ever blown it as a parent or as a child? I know I have. What if you need to be better at being a parent or a, a better child or a better Christ follower? Well, there's a, a verse over in Proverbs 24 that's a verse that is just for you. I like it. It says, For though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again, gets up, try, try again. A godly person does not let defeat keep them down. They get back up. And how many times do they get back up? As many times as it takes. And so I'm wrapping up. Like I said earlier, sometimes I got being a dad right and sometimes I really blew it. I just want to share a time with you in closing that uh, I think I got it right. It was Father's Day in North Liberty, Indiana. We were attending church and they had asked if my daughter Rebecca and I would sing a special for Father's Day. I was really excited about it. And we practiced and practiced, didn't we, Rebecca? Yes, we did. And then we got up in front of all those people, and there were a lot of people there that day. I started singing, but someone didn't. She was scared to death. She froze in her tracks. And so I just asked, it was on a tape, and I asked, can you just stop the tape a minute? And so rather than chewing around and saying, you know, we practice this, we can do this, you know. I said, don't look at the people. Let's go down and just sit down on the front, on the steps, and you just look at me. And I'll sing, and then you sing. And we got through it, didn't we, Rebecca? There were people that came up afterwards and they said, that was the most loving thing I've ever seen in my life. That was the time I got it right. Maybe she's a pastor here today because rather than chewing her out, I showed some compassion, some love, some kindness. And so my friends, if you want your children to grow to be great children of God, show that patience, show that love, sit down with them, don't expect them to look out the crowd and get it right. Just look them right in the eyes. A lot of tears were shed that day, and some of them were mine. Very proud of all my children. And I love them dearly. And I know that you do too. 
I, I was really touched that we as a church body gathered together and prayed for someone today. They're going to the military. You know what really touched me, though? It's when his sister hugged his neck. And in tears. She was, no, if she wasn't saying it with her words, she was saying it with her tears, I love you and I'm with you. My friends, that's what we need. We need one another. We need love. And it's not just because it's a Father's Day thing or a mother's thing or a child's thing. It's because we must, we must show the love of God in everything we do and in everything we say. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, I thank you for a time that we could gather today. I do thank you for, uh, for my dad, for my father-in-law, for the effect they had on my life. I thank you for all the dads out here today, and, and it's not an easy job. But I thank you for them. I thank you for the love they show. There are times we get confused, God. We don't know what to do. And that's the time that rather than giving up, we need to be wise to call on you and allow you, our Heavenly Father, show your love for us. And so God, this day as we celebrate fatherhood, may we celebrate you, our Heavenly Father, more than any father we've ever had. You showed us what love is. You gave us love. And so now, God, we thank you for that incredible gift. And we do that all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good to be with you today. Let's go out and celebrate those dads. Thank you. 